New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy plans to lift mask mandates in schools as cases continue to fall in the state. Joining us right now is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He is former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor who also serves on the boards of both Pfizer and Illumina. And Scott, this example in New Jersey, along with what we've seen from the new governor in Virginia, where he also wanted to allow parents to do what they wanted there, um, it, it kind of shows how we are getting to the point where people are trying to figure out how we come out of this, how we get back to a more normal. Um, where, where do you stand on this right now? Well, look, I think it's prudent that governors think about what the off switch looks like as well as what the on switch looks like when it comes to this mitigation. We can't just Im implement these kinds of provisions and not have a very clear metric for when we're going to lift them. And that metric's approaching in a lot of states. If you look at states like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, they're down to about 35 to 40 cases per 100,000 people per day. We usually define, or we have historically defined, 10 cases per 100,000 people per day as a sufficiently low threshold that we could start to lift this kind of mitigation. Uh, and we're in a period right now where people have much more immunity than they had in the past. So we can lean forward and take a little bit more risk, even at a higher level of prevalence, because we have a lot of vaccine-induced immunity. We have a lot of immunity through prior infection. So the risk is lower, and the risk that you're going to have a resurgence of this particular variant is, su is substantially lower, because a lot of people have had this infection. Incidentally, the CDC describes uh, low prevalence as 10 cases per 100,000 people per week. So it's about 1.44 cases per day that the CDC defines as low prevalence which is a level of spread that we've never reached at any point in this pandemic, which just goes to show how the CDC is out of step, really, with what the states are and have to do. You know, neither of those, those states, though, have done this. At least we haven't heard from New Jersey yet, but it sounds like it's going to be a, a date that he sets, not, 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 a, not based on when case counts actually hit certain levels. Does that concern you at all or no? No, because I think at this point you can predict where prevalence is going to be at a particular date. And I suspect the governors are looking at models. They, they see the declines in their states. And you have a pretty rough approximation when prevalence is going to reach a low level. I don't mm -hmm. think that there's anything that's going to happen in the foreseeable future that's going to disrupt the declines that we're seeing right now. Even BA2, that new Omicron variant, has failed to launch. We haven't really seen it take root. So I think that the, the declines are pretty locked in from now until the spring and the summer. There's always a risk that a new variant emerges that we haven't seen yet and starts to spread. But if that does come to fruition, that's several months away, because something that we don't even know about yet would take months to spread around the globe and get into the United States. So I think it's pretty locked in, these kinds of declines we're seeing. They know where they're going to be in two weeks. I think within two weeks in the tri-state region, you're going to be down to about 15 to 20 cases per 100,000 people per day. That's a sufficiently low level that we could try to restore some normalcy, at least in schools especially. Yeah, that, that would be very good news. Um... Do you anticipate that these mask mandates will get picked up again in the fall if there is another resurgence, just given, I think, how exhausted people are with some of these things? Yeah, look, I think we always should have identified the mitigation. After that devastating first wave in New York, when we really had no choice but to adopt very harsh measures to try to control the spread, because the New York City healthcare system all but collapsed, let's face it, I think we should have always defined these kinds of mitigations as things that we implement to deal with epidemic peaks. The problem is that they became frozen. They became provisions that lasted in perpetuity. And I think that's where you lost the support of the population. I think if people knew that masks were something we were going to have to do for maybe six weeks at the peak of COVID season in the middle of the winter to try to preserve hospital capacity, I think you'd have more of a consensus around these things. But we didn't really define what the endpoints were. These provisions seemed open-ended. And that's when you started to lose support. And this isn't just a right-left political debate, although a lot of the opposition is more on the right. I acknowledge that. But I think it's much broader than that at this point. I think people are, to your point, exhausted. And I think people don't know when these things are going to be lifted. And at least when it comes to schools and kids, we should be willing to take a little bit more risk to try to return some sense of normalcy. Remember, children really haven't known a normal school day for two years now. That does start to take a cumulative toll. We, try, we have to try to restore some sense of normalcy into that environment.